Hey everyone, for the past couple of years, Motorola has really made a name for itself with its budget and mid-range phones. While the other major brands battled it out in the more expensive side of the spectrum, Moto did its own thing. Now, that's changing with the Motorola Edge Duo. The Plus version of the phone is focused on the more premium and expensive side of the market, while the vanilla Motorola Edge is focused on being a flagship killer. So, has it succeeded? I'm Angie for GS Marina, and this is our review of the Motorola Edge. The Motorola Edge is a looker with a waterfall display that curves halfway around the side until it meets the aluminum frame. Now, for many people, curved screens have fallen out of favor due to touch input mistakes on phones in the past. So whether you like it or not depends on personal preference. That said, we didn't find it to be an issue on this particular phone. Also, it's a comfy hold, though a bit thick, and it's not too heavy. The top and bottom bezel are quite small, the screen is a nice one at first glance, and there's an optical fingerprint reader on the front. It's fast and reliable, and that's not something that every phone boasts, even flagship ones. The display is protected by Gorilla Glass 5, and the phone is splash resistant. The back is made of high quality plastic, and our unit has a gorgeous dark blue coloring. In fact, at first it's a bit difficult to tell that it is plastic. The cameras are almost flush with the back, so there's no wobble when it's on a desk. It also has a neat hat trick. It can be left standing up without anything to support it. The 6.7 inch OLED screen has an extended Full HD resolution. It has a good but not amazing pixel density of 385 ppi. It supports HDR10, but not HDR10 Plus like the Moto Edge Plus. This is strange because the two phones have the same display. Fortunately, the Motorola Edge retains the 90Hz refresh rate, which should make everything feel much faster than a regular 60Hz panel. It's nice to see this great feature picking up this year because it definitely adds to the overall experience. Brightness went up to 416 nits in manual mode and 595 nits in auto. However, the auto brightness is active only when you're using the screen with the higher refresh rate turned on. Color reproduction was very good, but whites and grays are a little bluish. Nothing too extreme though. The Edge has a standard stereo speaker setup with a thin earpiece up top and a bottom firing speaker. Surprisingly, next to the speaker, you'll also find a 3.5 mm jack. You also have the option of an FM radio if you're using wired headphones. The stereo speakers were tuned by a company called Wave to deliver high loudness and output quality. In our test, however, they had below average loudness. And while the quality was quite good, the high sounded a bit muffled and not as crisp as the Edge Plus. The phone has a large 4,500 mAh battery. It got an excellent endurance rating of 102 hours with the 90Hz refresh rate turned on. With it turned off, you got an hour or two more, but with the battery life being so good, we recommend simply enjoying the phone with a higher refresh rate. The fast charging was less impressive and you got from 0 to 37% in half an hour. Not sluggish, but definitely not the fastest we've seen. Speaking of fast, the Edge sports a Snapdragon 765 chipset. It's a very recent mid-range Qualcomm chipset complete with 5G connectivity and it came out on top of every other mid-range chipset. The only caveat is that slightly more expensive phones, like the OnePlus 8 or the Realme X50 Pro, have the flagship Snapdragon 865. The phone also offers 4 to 6 gigs of RAM and UFS 2.1 storage instead of the UFS 3.0 that you find on the Edge Plus. It does have an expandable microSD card slot though. The Motorola Edge is running Android 10 and Moto's version of it is a very stock Android experience with some extra features bundled into the Moto app. The Moto actions are clever, and you twist to launch the camera and do a karate chop to start the flashlight, which should be familiar to you if you've ever used a Motorola device before. There are also edge lights that take advantage of the waterfall screen and light up the sides of the display for calls and notifications. A bit like an LED light, but much flashier. There's an edge touch which is new and includes useful shortcuts. It's a floating action bar on the side that you can move to either the left or right sides of the phone. Moto Game Time is not new, but it packs some new features. In the past, it allowed you to filter out notifications, turn on audio enhancements, and disable adaptive brightness, among other things. For the Moto Edge series, it now allows you to add virtual triggers on the edge of the phone for in-game use. The navigation uses a bar on the bottom, and it's quite easy to get used to. Swipe in from the sides to go back, swipe left or right on the bar at the bottom to switch between apps, and swipe diagonally to launch the Google Assistant. 
The annoying part is that you can't hide the bar and it only disappears if you're gaming or watching a movie. The Motorola Edge has a quad camera setup. There's a 64 megapixel quad Bayer main snapper, a 16 megapixel ultrawide cam, an 8 megapixel telephoto with 2 times magnification, and a time of flight camera. In daylight with the main camera, photos were very good. They had excellent contrast and dynamic range, and no visible noise. Detail was alright, though not spectacular, and colors were true to life, though a bit on the cool side. The auto HDR is triggered often during the day and it definitely boosts the dynamic range while reducing noise. There was a small loss of detail though. You can take photos in the full 64 megapixel resolution, but they're poor in detail and they look upscaled in comparison to a regular photo. With the ultrawide, colors were a bit on the warmer side and as a whole we quite like them. They have enough detail, superb contrast and dynamic range, and low noise. You can also use the ultrawide for super macro shots and it performed pretty well here. The 8 megapixel telephoto camera upscales all of its images to 16 megapixels. If you want to shoot in its native 8 megapixels, you have to go into manual mode and shoot in auto there. Photos shot this way have natural detail rendition, but lacked software enhancements like HDR and the dynamic range was underwhelming. If you shoot in 16 megapixel with a telephoto camera, like Moto intended, detail takes a hit. Contrast and dynamic range are good though. The colors are nice, but are also a bit off from the other cameras. If you want to take portraits, however, the telecam saves photos in its native resolution. This, combined with the time of flight sensor, resulted in some of the better portraits we've seen recently. Background separation and the faux bokeh were convincing. In low light, regular photos from the main camera were uninspiring. They don't have much detail and dynamic range is low. Colors were washed out and photos were noisy. If you switch to the night vision mode, photos are much brighter and far less noisy. Blown highlights are mostly restored, colors are better and we have more details in the shadows. In short, using the night vision mode is well recommended. If you want zoom photos at night, you should know that they're digitally zoomed and coming from the main camera, so as far as colors and dynamic range goes, it's the same situation. Shots with the ultrawide at night weren't so great and that's putting it gently. There's poor detail, lots of noise, a very dark exposure, and muddy colors. Just no. The Edge can record videos at up to 4K at 30fps with the main snapper, while you can record full HD footage at 30fps with all three cameras. Electronic stabilization is also available in every mode. The 4K footage is excellent with plenty of detail, nice contrast, and accurate colors. The dynamic range was alright too. Full HD videos were great across the board with detail, contrast, and colors, but they were over sharpened. Clips from the ultrawide don't have too much detail, but otherwise look quite nice. Footage from the telephoto camera is flagship grade with excellent detail, good sharpness, and excellent colors and dynamic range. The selfie camera is a 25 megapixel quad bear one that saves 6.2 megapixel images by default. They're excellent in detail and contrast with a wide dynamic range and accurate colors. Motorola really did a great job with this phone, and it has an excellent display, good battery life, and a nice camera setup to go along with its good looks. Now, the chipset is mid-range, which puts it at a disadvantage in comparison to phones like the Realme X50 and the OnePlus 8, but it performs well enough for most people. And as far as this competition is concerned, well, the Realme X50 is not available in all markets, and the OnePlus 8 is about 100 euros more expensive. So, if you're looking for a flagship killer with a great screen and great looks, this is definitely one to consider. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below, subscribe, hit the bell icon, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.